Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends. So in this video today we are going to study the intensity distribution of light in a single slit diffraction pattern. So here we have a single slit. The width of the slit is B. Light, monochromatic light of wavelength lambda is incident on the single slit. The minute the monochromatic light interacts with this part of the single slit, Huygen secondary wavelets are being produced at this points in the plane of the single slit. And I label this Huygen wavefronts wave and I label this Huygen wavelet sources as A1, A2, A3, A4, dot 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 and a n. I drop a perpendicular a 1 and a n dash. Also I assume that the distance between two Huygen secondary sources is delta. So this is delta, this is delta, this is delta so on and so forth up till the end. So, what is the basic path difference between the ray that is emerging from A1 and the ray that is emerging from A2? To be more specific, what is the path difference between the ray that is diffracted at A1 and that which is diffracted at A2? So, for that, I need the angle theta. The angle theta is the angle made by the diffracted rays with the horizontal. So this is theta. This is angle theta and by geometry we have even this angle is actually equal to theta. So now the first thing is I will like to find out what is the part difference between the rays that is emerging from A1 and the rays that is emerging from A2 and now I will like to see since I and now since I know what is the angle theta I will like to see what is the main part difference between the rays which are emerging from A1 and the one which is actually emerging from from A2 right let us call this particular part difference as phi so first of all it will be a to A2 dash. We have to label A2 dash in our figure and this is your A2 dash over here. So A2, A2 dash by the geometry this is delta and this is theta. So by the geometry A2, A2 dash is equal to delta into sine of theta. Now we wish to convert this particular path difference into a phase difference. For this, we know that for a path difference equivalent to a wavelength number, the phase difference is corresponding to 2 pi radians. Hence, if delta sine theta is the path difference, then the corresponding phase difference let us assume that to be phi and hence we get that phi is equal to 2 pi delta sine theta upon lambda. So this is basically the phase difference expression for the waves that are originating from corresponding Huygen wavelet sources and that is nothing but from A1 and from A2. Now 
this particular phase difference continues forward. But prior to that, let us highlight this equation for phi. So this is the phase difference between A1 wavelet source and A2 wavelet source. Let us now go a step further. Let us try to find out the phase difference between the wavelet sources emerging from A1 and that emerging from A3. And that is A3, A3 dash. And let us label now A3 dash. This is now your A3 dash. And as you will see that this is delta, once more delta, hence this will be equal to 2 delta sin theta. But we already know that delta sin theta is equal to a phase difference of phi. Hence, this expression is equal to 2 phi. This means the phase difference between the next wavefront point or rather the wavelet point source and that between the first one is 2 phi. So this difference goes on continuing 2 phi, 3 phi and ultimately the phase difference between the last one and the first one will turn out to be a n a n dash which is equal to n minus 1 into phi. We have to be careful over here students that it will not be equal to n phi but it will be 1 less than n. Right? You can just seek a parallelism over here. Whenever it is 3 over here it is 2. Right? Whenever over here this is 2 over here this is 1. So similarly if at all this is n this is 1 less that is equal to n minus 1 phi. So we have finally obtained an expression for the phase difference between the extreme rays, the one at the start of the slit and the one at the end of the slits. And this particular phase difference is equal to n minus 1 into phi. Let us now highlight this expression. Also, we label these expressions as let us label this particular expression as 1 and let us label this particular expression as 2. And we now develop our further diffraction theory based on these expressions for the phase differences that we have obtained. Having obtained the expressions for the phase differences, the next step is actually to find out what is the electric field contribution due to this secondary wavelet generated at each of these wavelet sources at the point P on the screen. So now let us write down what will be the contribution due to the ray emanating from the point A1 and by ray I mean over here it is nothing but the secondary wavelet. So this is now equal to, let us say that particular contribution is E1 is equal to an amplitude source multiplied by cos of omega t. E1 is equal to A into cos of omega t. This is the contribution due to the secondary wavelet from the point A1. Similarly, we write down E2 is equal to A into cos of omega t plus the phase angle phi. One has to remind oneself that the phase difference between the rays emerging from A1 and from A2, the diffracted rays that are emerging from A1 and A2 
the phase difference between them is phi and that is actually written in the expression. So on and so forth. I go on writing this down. Let me write one more that is E3 is equal to amplitude A multiplied by cos and this will be equal to omega t and plus 2 phi. So on and so forth I go. So this is the first diffracted ray on one edge of the slit and I know now go to the contribution from the last diffracted ray the one at the right at the bottom of the of the diffraction slit and that will be equal to a into cos of omega t mind you this will not be equal to n phi but rather this will be equal to n minus 1 phi so it's going to be equal to n minus 1 into phi so here we have obtained all the expressions for the individual electric fields that are contributing at the point p on the screen due to the corresponding points on the slit so the next question that we are asking is what will be the net composition nothing be the net composition will be the superposition of all these waves i simply add this contribution in order to give you the net contribution at the point p and this is going to be equal to e is equal to e1 plus e2 plus e3 once again and continuing so on and so forth up till the e nth one next i substitute the respective values in this expression e is equal to a into cos of omega t plus a into cos of omega t plus phi plus a into cos of omega t plus 2 phi so on and so forth i go on continuing up till the last term it is there which is a into cos of omega t plus we have to be careful over here it is n minus 1 into phi the next is we have to write down then expansion for this and the expansion turns out to be e is equal to a into sine of this is going to be equal to a into sine of n into phi by 2 divided by sine of phi by 2 into cos of omega t plus n minus 1 phi and this will be equal to not just n minus 1 phi but it will be n minus 1 phi by 2. So this is how actually we are getting an expression for the electric field but yet it is far from complete. Now let us highlight this particular expression and let us label this important expression as your expression number 3. The question is can we simplify this expression still further and the answer is yes we need to simplify this expression further for the very simple reason that it will not be possible for us to measure the time period. It will not be possible for us to measure the omega. So we have to convert this particular expression into parameters which are measurable and that of course will be the next step. Let us see how we do this. So B is equal to N minus 1 into delta. So what is B? B is nothing but the width of your slit. N minus 1 are the number of Huygen secondary wavelet sources. Basically there are N but in our derivation we are having N minus 1. Delta is the difference between corresponding Huygen wavelet sources. So now B is equal to N minus 1 into delta which I can very well approximate it to 
in delta for simplicity. At the same time, let us assume that we have a new quantity which is nothing but beta and this is equal to pi into b into sine of theta divided by lambda. So I define a new quantity beta is equal to pi into b into sine theta in divided by lambda. So when I put this substitution in equation 3 this is what I get for the net electric field at the point P. So this is equal to A is equal to A into sine of beta divided by sine of beta divided by N into cos of omega t mind you in the previous expression it was n minus 1 right multiplied by the factor phi over here this will correspond to beta. So this is our new expression an alternative expression which I have obtained using the substitutions for beta and for b. We go one step further and simplify this equation and what do we do for that? First of all, let us simplify the denominator. As the number of slits are tending to infinity, the value of beta will actually tend to 1. The reason being beta is actually having delta in that. Okay. So as we are as n tends to infinity the value of beta will actually tend to 1. So as the number of slits is tending to infinity the factor beta is tending to 0. Remember the factor beta has delta in it which is the distance between the corresponding Huygen wavelet sources. So as you are increasing the number of sources the distance between them will tend to 0. That's what this equation means. And using this expression, we can very well say that I will find out the limit of the quantity and therefore sine of beta by n, this entire expression will actually tend to, from the limiting conditions, this will actually tend to beta upon n. So I can write over here, limit of beta tends to 0. So as limit of beta tends to 0, sine of beta upon n will actually tend to beta upon n. So let us write this down in the above expression. And this will turn out to be E is equal to A into sine of beta divided by beta upon n into cos of omega t plus beta. And hence your E is equal to A into sine of beta divided by beta into cos of omega t plus beta. And this is our final expression for the electric field where your A is equal to N into A. So we have to remember this that n is equal to a is equal to n into a wherein n is the total number of Huygen wavelet sources and a is nothing but the each the amplitude of each Huygen wavelet source wave. Let us now highlight this particular expression. So in this video what we have learned is we started with a single slit and then we divided this slit into various Huygen secondary wavelet sources and we considered the contribution of each of these diffracted rays at the point P on the screen and finally we obtained the expression for the electric field at the point P. Since you thank students for watching this particular video, stay tuned to Ikeda and do subscribe to our channel Ikeda. Thanks a lot.